It's a underground, overground, wombling free. The wombles. <laughs> no, this is Miss Van Hens Coffee Shop actually. In Miss Van Hooten's coffee shop, the waitress wore an Eton crop, and everything about her was so far away. But something in her atmosphere, a slight couldn't care less to share, informed the passing dandy she was out all day then in spring the distant provincial churches would ring try it's the wrong words can i start that again you yeah. just got it slightly wrong do it properly sir take three miss van hooten's coffee shop in miss van hooten's coffee shop the waitress wore an eaten crop And everything about her was so far away But something in her atmosphere A slight couldn't care less to share Informed the passing dandy She was out all day Then in spring smiled all of the trees came out with leaves and I would linger with my cup till six o'clock and sweeping up and help her put the chairs up on the table the common sense would disappear in one so young and not so clear that she might break my heart for cheer if able. Then in spring, the green and crowded pavements could sing, and if she'd smile. On everyone. The Off-White album 
uh, was made in the, it, and there's a joke there because it was made after The Greatest Living Englishman. The Greatest Living Englishman, which I made with Andy uh, Partridge producing, it was kind of un, unexpectedly successful. Well, not unexpectedly to Andy. We knew we'd made this really good album, which we, we bought, I think, everyone around it. And there, were, there was only me and Lowell and Andy around it, you know, but, but people who heard it passing by said, Bloody hell, these songs work. This is great. This is really good stuff. So we knew we'd made something special, even when we were mastering it, you know. And so it had something to come up, and the Americans went for it straight away. You know, it was Pipeline, who I think, I think they went bust somewhere towards the promotion period, or it probably would have sold a few more. But it started really shifting quite a lot from a standing start, barely any promotion, nothing in America. And the news leaked back to England, of course, where... You know the all the all your glossy rock um, monthlies gave it the usual. You know I was lucky if they ever mentioned me. The cleaners from Venus said, "Oh yes, the cleaners from Venus. Yes, they were from Essex. They were a bit, you know, you know they're just really snotty there." So I just I didn't send in review copies. I, I never do, but someone must have sent some copies. Anyway, so the Off White album things were expected of that. You know, like we've made. We've made my revolver or Sergeant Pepper's or whatever. So now, so I said, why don't we call the new album the Off White album? And so we made, we started making this album. We got a French producer. And why do we get a French producer? Good things about French music, French do great, great music. But Louis knew about string quartets and things. And he's, you know, a very educated guy, and he's not doing all the usual producer things like nodding his head and banging. And, you know. So we did that, and that was the. And it's sometimes said. That the songs on the Off White album were actually more crafted, more organised, and more focused than the songs on the Greatest Living Englishman, which was a collection of stuff I'd written, you know, maybe in the five years up to that, with an added stuff when Andy said he thought we'd only got half an album. So I'd had to go and write the rest of it. And that got me honed as a songwriter again. So by the time Louis came along, I'm muscled up, I'm Mr. Songwriter. And so I wrote a bunch of songs. And in 1994, when we started the album in December of 94, so I'd been in Iceland, I'd been in Germany, um, but I'd never really been to me. And of course, people around here, they don't know what to do. They, I, I'm sure some of them thought I was still a gardener, because I'd come back to get my head together, and one of the professors would say to me, Martin, my garden's an awful mess, I don't suppose you could... I said, well, come into the garden, I'd love to. I wanted a bit, a bit of that, but people thought I was a gardener, so they said, what have you been doing? And if I say, well, I've had this record out, and it's kind of um, done a bit all right in America, so we've been out to France a couple of times, then I had to go out to Japan to do some promo, and then the Icelandic ambassador took me out to Iceland, you know. But anyway, well, then I get on with your fight album, and I've written all these songs, and they've leaked in, the world has leaked into my songwriting. And uh, I had, what, what are those intellectuals call it captured the zeitgeist or at least captured my zeitgeist one of sort of living around the world and every so often coming back to see what terrible things the, the government have been doing now <laughs>